We welcome you to worship on this uh, last Sunday in the season of Easter. Uh, this is Ascension Sunday. <clears throat> uh, in Protestant uh, churches on uh, the last Sunday of Easter, we celebrate Jesus ascending into heaven using the um, uh, timeline that Luke has in his gospel where Jesus was resurrected and walked on the earth for 40 days in the gospel of Luke. Uh, ascended into heaven, and then 10 days later, uh, the Holy Spirit, Pentecost, uh, the Spirit descended from heaven. So we'll be hearing from the Gospel of Luke, where the only place where that story of the Ascension is, and, and, and be thinking about that. And, and I'm appreciative of you in the midst of this uh, unofficial start of summer, this Memorial Day weekend on this beautiful day, to come in and worship uh, and uh, celebrate God's love and receive a blessing in the midst of that. Why don't we uh, stand? You've been uh, saying this uh, Easter greeting for all these months now, so you are all ready to just to, to shout this out. This is your last chance uh, today to do this before next April when Easter rolls on again. So, hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. You are great at that. And let us sing. Uh, I think the insert, is there an insert? There's, there might not be an insert in this service. Do you have an insert? Yeah. Oh, you do. Look at that. <laughs> it's a familiar tune, but different words.
We want to give thanks to Claire Dallison who came play for us today. Uh, she just graduated from Capital University. Claire's been uh, playing with us for the, I think, all four years she was at Capital. Uh, she's a music major and she's going to be teaching elementary uh, music here at a Harvest Prep School. So, so we're good. So we'll probably see you back, I'm guessing, even though you graduated. Thanks, Claire. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us sing this feast of victory. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, so that amid all the turmoil and the despair in this world, our hearts may be fixed where joy is found. In your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, Susie Motor is going to come forward to encourage us to give a good gift. Good morning. As many of you already know, next Sunday, June 5th, is our Red Cross blood drive here down in Fritz Hall. And we do have a few time slots still open if you would like to donate blood. Um, and it's really important um, that these donations happen because there's less than a one-day supply of many critical blood types. Uh, the Red Cross works very closely with hospitals to send that blood to uh, the hospitals and um, currently the donations are not keeping up with the need and um, so it's critical. It's, it's really a critical time. Uh, at times as much as one quarter of the hospital's blood needs are not being met. Um, so we still have time slots open if you feel called that that's something you can do. 
It's super easy to register, thanks to all the work that the Dean family has done with QR codes and links and uh, sign-up sheets. Um, but also, you can just go to redcross.org, push the button that says, uh, I'd like to donate, put in our zip code for Reynoldsburg, 43068, and look for Messiah Lutheran over on the left side and pick a time slot that works for you and your family. Now, it's super easy to qualify. <clears throat> You have to be 16 years old, and you have to weigh more than 110 pounds. I know I qualify for that one. Uh, and also, people do worry, well, I'm on medication. Can I give? 90% of all medications that the average American is on qualify to still donate blood. Uh, if you're concerned about a certain medication, go on the website again, and just uh, you can type in different medications and see if you still qualify to donate. Um, so it's really easy to sign up to register to save a life, um, and we hope that you do. Besides donors, we also need volunteers to help us at the registration desk. So if you'd like to just meet people, have them sign up, sit at the desk, and have them fill out their paperwork, we could use help with that after and before each service. So if you feel called to do any of that, I'll be here till probably 1 o'clock today. Come see me. And um, we really do appreciate your support, and it is a really super good cause. So God bless, and please consider making a blood donation. Thank you. <clears throat> Our psalm today is from chapter 47. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God is King over the nation. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. The word of the Lord. And a reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. So that with the eyes of your heart opened and enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of that great power. For God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the ages to come. And he has put all things under the feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand as we uh, welcome our gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
gospel this morning, Ascension Sunday, are the very last words in the gospel of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. So then Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms, all of that must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins are to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning here from Jerusalem. For you are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending you what my Father has promised. So stay here into the city until you have been clothed with this power from on high. And then he led the disciples out of Jerusalem as far as Bethany. And he lifted up his arms and he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And the disciples worshipped him, returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. So far today, it has turned out to be a beautiful, bright, sunny, blue sky day with uh, some white, cottony clouds that are floating around. Those are surely my favorite sort of days, when, especially when you're like in an office all day and you come out and you're just surprised by this beauty. It, it kind of fills you up, energizes you, makes you hopeful. Which is why living in Columbus these last 30 years with all of you guys in January, February, and March is discouraging at times because we get a lot of cloudy, wet days in, in the rainy, cold season of winters here in Columbus. But our rainy season is nothing like uh, what they experience in Juneau, Alaska, where I went last June and spent three weeks uh, this uh, capital of Alaska, this village, really, is, is built in a rainforest. So that on average, they get 86 sunny days in Juneau, Alaska. If you do the math, that means that one in four days is sunny. Or if you want to be a pessimist, three of four days are, are, are cloudy. And, and not just cloudy, on 250 days in Juneau, Alaska, they have measurable rain. Cloudy and rainy. And, hmm. In June, no less, when I was there. In fact, when my plane landed in their tiny airport and my friend Terry, who I was going up there to serve at her church while she went on a, a vacation with her family, uh, when she picked me up from that airport and drove me along this highway of sorts along the water, because Juneau, of course, is an island, and it's surrounded by these straits of islands, and, and she looked out the window, and she waved her arm, excited to see her old friend, and said, you're just going to love the views here in Juneau. And I, and I look out the window, and it is just raining and black and, and mist from the water. I couldn't see anything out there but yuck. And sure enough, like two or three days later, I'm on that same road, and it is one of the four or five sunny days that I received in the three weeks I was in Juneau. And there was mountains and islands all for the eye could see exactly where Terry had said this, as if I could see beyond this mist and gray and see what she saw, the beauty of this place that was around her, because it was beautiful. But, but sometimes, the beauty of what's around us gets covered up by this grayness, wetness, cold, and darkness. It feels like I've had a number of days in the last few weeks that have been covered up by gray darkness on what should be bright, sunny, hopeful days. I mean, two weeks ago, Saturday, if you remember, it was a bright, sunny day here in Columbus and in Buffalo, New York, on that Saturday that an 18-year-old man, teenager really, right, it drove 200 miles to find a predominantly black neighborhood 
in order to kill as many African Americans as he could. In the minutes that the hundreds of rounds of that gun he was carrying would allow him. Men and women, children, old and young, like us, right? In a, in a store, tops, shopping, and their life is suddenly ended by a teenager full of racial hatred. Which seems almost ironic that the shooting happened, uh, this massacre of these 10 people in the store, uh, almost two years to the day of when George Floyd was murdered in Minneapolis that set off months of protests in the summer of 2020 and, and thoughtful discussions in communities like ours about the evidence of racism and what we could do about racism in our world. Discussions that honestly left me hopeful. And that hope dashed by this cloudburst on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. And then just this week, right? Just as we're processing the horror of this one tragedy, <laughs> just this week, I, I, I failed to hear about it on Tuesday. I was moving around so much. So it wasn't until Wednesday when I came in for the last day of school here at Messiah when we lined up 12 kindergartners in homemade graduation caps and, 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 and marched them down the center aisle with their parents and grandparents clapping for them. On that day, the last day of school for Messiah Christian School, that's when I heard about this tragedy that's befallen Uvalde, Texas where another teenager with two high-powered rifles entered into an elementary school intent on shooting that gun with as many rounds as those fast guns allow. And bullets causing horrors in two different classrooms killing 19 children, two teachers, and scarring forever the teachers and students that had to witness this, that had to see the aftermath of what those bullets do. When I heard about this in the midst of the joy of this day here in Messiah, it was like a cloud had just moved over the sun and, and rain all of a sudden. And I went home and I forced myself to, to watch the pictures on the news of these 10-year-olds in, in softball uniforms and dance costumes. Forced myself to listen to parents somehow talking to a reporter on the worst day of their lives about their grief. Forced myself to listen to other parents from uh, the high school in Florida and the elementary school in Connecticut talk about what this new life was going to look like for these grieving parents because they had been there too. His parents in Uvalde were joining a, a fraternity of parents in our country that have experienced this horror. It's hard to stay hopeful in the midst of those kind of storms, that kind of pain. Ascension Sunday. You know, when you, when you see paintings of Ascension Sunday, they are almost always bright blue skies, right? If you've seen these uh, Middle Ages paintings, these medieval paintings, they're bright blue skies, there's white cottony clouds, this is the perfect sort of day. And, and, and Jesus is riding one of those clouds in the painting straight up to heaven. Because that's the way the ancients imagined the, the cosmos, the universe in that time, right? They, I mean, they intuited, right, that, that heaven must be up there where God and the hosts and all the good things that fly around, right? They're up there. And, and, and down here, it's like a wedding cake. Down here on this level is us, the creation, people, goodness. And below us is danger and darkness and death, Sheol as our Jewish cousins would call it, this 
three tears. So it, 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 it makes logical sense that, that Jesus ascends into heaven, leaves this face here and goes up there. And so the paintings are almost like Jesus is calling an Uber and a cloud comes to get him and says, take me home. And there's joy and worship. But you know, when you, when you think about Ascension Sunday and you think about what's happening, you're, you got to stop and scratch your head and go, what exactly are we celebrating here? <laughs> I mean, Jesus is leaving us. Jesus is leaving these disciples. How do you think they felt seeing their Lord and Savior float off in some cloud? Jesus is leaving them, and yet Caesar is still king of Rome, and, and Herod and Tippus is still king of Jerusalem, and both those men want these disciples dead. And Jesus is leaving. Jesus is leaving, and there's still poverty in the world, in their villages, in their homes. Jesus is leaving, and there's still outcasts and communities eking out an existence. Jesus is leaving, and they're still differently abled, lame and blind, as the scripture says. Jesus is leaving, and the power of death and grief still exists in our world. So I imagine these disciples, as Jesus is floating away, are anxious and worried. And verse 50 says that Jesus stops that cloud and turns around and he raises his arms and he shares a blessing with them. This is the motion. We hear about it first, I believe, in Leviticus. Aaron, one of the first temple priests, did this sort of blessing. Shares a blessing with them. This, this is the motion of blessing. The idea, right? Think of this three-tier sort of universe. The idea is that you, you take all the powers of heaven and you, and you focus it down where these hands are pointing. Down to a, a neighbor that's in need, a person that's in distress. That's what a blessing is. Like you're holding up a magnifying glass to the sun to light a leaf on fire. You're taking all that power out there and you're bringing it to bear where it needs to be. The power of God's love right here. And Jesus, with these anxious disciples, raises his arm and shares a blessing. And a blessing in scripture is, is sort of like that sun that pokes out of a rain cloud. In the midst of a summer storm, have you, have, you seen, have you seen that before? It's raining and all of a sudden a beam of light shines through. That's how I imagine a blessing. This power that comes to us in, in the rough waters of this world. This light that pierces the darkness. Jesus shares a blessing with them and then tells them what? To go and be a blessing to all nations. Shares a blessing with them so that they might share a blessing with others in the midst of their anxiousness. Because here's the truth. We are all going to live through some dark and cloudy and rain-filled days. And the only way we live with hope in those days is by the power of God's love shared with us in a blessing. And if we don't, then we don't live. So as I spent three weeks in Juneau, Alaska, I became pretty impressed with the people in this uh, town building a rainforest, how good they were at living in the rain. <laughs> and they do everything in the rain. I, I would be, it would be noon on a Tuesday, you know, school's out and, and it's like 48 degrees and raining and I'm, and I'm looking out my window at Terry's house that I was staying at and there'd be five 10 year olds riding up the street on their bikes in the midst of this cold rainy day. And they weren't like our 10 year olds, right? Just fleeing the rain before they get soaked. No, they were just in it. Riding their bikes in it for no apparent reason at all, other than that they were 10. And on like the second day, you know how it is when you have a guest, you got like their whole agenda filled, you know, to show them much. And Terry was only there for like three or four days before she left for her vacation. So she had all these things she wanted to do with me. And at one point she said, you know what, 
you're gonna, we're gonna take you to the softball game tonight. Kurt and I, that's her husband. We're, we're in this co-ed softball game. We're gonna take you at five o'clock, I think is what it was. And then right after that, then we'll go out to dinner. And I look out the window and I'm not making this up. It is raining buckets of rain outside. And, and I don't think it was higher than 50 degrees. I mean, it wasn't like a warm 80 degree rain or anything like that. And I just laughed at her and I said, no, <laughs> I'm not standing outside to watch you play softball. Tell, tell me when you're at the restaurant and I'll make my way there then. And Terry said, Carl, if you don't live life in the rain in Juneau, you don't live life. <laughs> There's some wisdom there, isn't there? If you don't live life in the midst of these rainy, cloudy days. You don't live life. And we're able to live life in the midst of these cloudbursts that happen, that ruin our sunny days that we hope for. By not just receiving this blessing from God in the waters of baptism, the powers of heaven that are focused on us, but going out and sharing that blessing with others, with our neighbors in need and distress before us, by being a blessing for those that we know are in need. Like our African-American friends and Americans in this community who are reminded again of the power of racism after this tragic murders in Buffalo. Might Messiah be a blessing for our community, this wonderfully diverse community that's Reynoldsburg, Ohio? May we be a blessing not only to make the space welcoming for people of color, but by decisions we make and songs we choose and, and staff we hire and leaders we put forward, may we make known that all are valued brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God. Would that be a blessing in the midst of this storm? Because it's going to rain. And some tragedies are just going to overwhelm us, like this tragedy in Uvalde, Texas. With sighs too deep for words. So may we find a way to be a blessing for parents and families of these two teachers and 19 children. May we find a way to support and help all those who witness this disaster and are scarred and changed by it and focus God's power and love. May we be a blessing on these police officers that have become uh, the source of our angst and anger. <laughs> Because we got to be mad at somebody, it feels like. And these men and women seem to be holding that bag. May we be a, a blessing to the family of this 18-year-old teenager lost to his life that day. And pray for whoever loved this boy because their grief is now marred with shame. And that's a horrible thought. And may we focus God's power and love and be a blessing for those community leaders that can make a difference in our communities, in our world, in this country. Those who have the power to make decisions and change laws and policies so that we are not talking about a massacre every few weeks, it feels like, right? Our children don't have to be unsafe. Our stores don't have to be a, 
a crime scene. I love blue days. <laughs> I get a lot of joy from the best sort of days, like it looks like this is coming. But I live in the world where there's a lot of rain. <laughs> It feels like our, our country sometimes is a rainforest itself. And I live in those days with hope. Because if you're not living in the rain, you're not living. By the time I ended my stay in Juneau, Alaska, I, I was running every morning whether it was raining or not. I was hiking those mountains and pour and downpours. The last Sunday that I was there, I walked to the church about a mile and a half walk and pouring down rain. Got there soaking wet to lead worship. And I can tell you, they don't take jokes well about their rain in Juneau, Alaska. But I was all in. Because the power of God's love has been given to me in a blessing in these waters. And now I want to be faithful and share that blessing to all nations. Amen. of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see To see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy.
Well, let's have some sunshine. We got, uh, we got Linda Thompson. Linda, come forward. Linda's here with Dick. She doesn't want to come forward, but... <laughs> we got presents for... So Linda Thompson has been working here at Messiah for 16 years. I've been here 19 years, so for most of my time here at Messiah. Um, and you would think that would be a lucky opportunity for her to work beside me for 16 years. Uh, but I can't, um, I can't tell you how, how close a relationship that is uh, that, that we've created here in the office and, and how appreciative I've been for all these years to work beside Linda, to, to, to know there's someone who, who knows my quirks and still lives with me and, uh, uh, and, and is able to make me a better pastor by her work. And, um, and, and we've shared parenting, uh, parenting adult children's stories together and burying our parents together and, and complaining about our spouses together. <laughs> as well as building just a, a good team in the office. So life is going to change here at Messiah. And, uh, um, and that's frightening and scary because no one likes change at all. But, but, um, she wanted to retire back when Pastor Liz left in uh, 2019, the end of 2019, and I convinced her to stay on uh, three days a week for the last few years. And so now that she's turning 80 next year, she's, she, I'm sorry, we're de <laughs> she decided it was time to go. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> so we have uh, Ron Motor and Freddie Hester coming up, and they're going to they're gonna share some uh, gifts uh, with her. There we go. <laughs> What's that? No, 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 dude, it's in there. Okay. Ready? You want to go first? No, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I went back in my memory of what the ways. I'll just stay in the top of Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's go to the lectern. Freddie, go up to the lectern. I don't really. <laughs> See, that's why Ryan's the president of this congregation, those quick, thoughtful decisions. But a member suggested that we give them the opportunity to contribute to a retirement gift for you. And I went back in my memory and I couldn't remember exactly the last time we offered that option. But uh, Pastor Carl and I met over lunch and decided we were gonna move forward that way. He came back and hacked your email account and went ahead and sent out a broadcast message to the congregation that if they would like to contribute to a gift, we would do that. Then the logistics of it, I met with the counters to figure out exactly how they were going to keep this a secret. <laughs> and Richard, Richard Matter, who's sitting back there right now, told me, he said, we cannot put it on the counting sheet because even if we put it on there as a miscellaneous donation, she's going to throw me up against the wall till I tell her exactly what that's about. And I need to tell you, Dick, I know you're back there, that this gift is not intended for green fees. So. <laughs> but Linda, also known as Mrs. T to me, I think I'm safe saying that people here at Messiah have a great affection for you as a person and for the job you entailed and how well you did it. Therefore, today it is my pleasure, on behalf of the Messiah family, to present you with this check in the amount of $1,205. <laughs>
the church also gave you this present too that you could try to open up now. <laughs> you can look at the card later. <laughs> Just break it. Okay. Come on. Holy cow. Who did this? Here, I'm, when you get to the 80s, I'll break the way You're fine. These people got nothing but time. It's a nice blue day. So. Yeah, exactly. That's where they want to be. What Thank a, you guys. One of our members, Liz Newell, the made a it's made a painting of watercolor of Messiah for Linda so to take home. And then Freddie. And uh, that when you look at that picture, you have good memories of the past 16 years here. Nothing but but, but I, I need to tell you, Pastor Carl wanted me to commission an oil painting of himself <laughs> for, for, you, for you and Dick to hang in your house. But I decided against that. <laughs> this is beautiful. Linda. On behalf of the Senior Lunch Bunch Group, we have enjoyed you for 16 years being a part of our group. We hope you continue to be a part of our group on the third Tuesday of every month. <laughs> but we wanted to give you something a little extra as well. So we have a check for you as well from our group. Good. Why don't we stand up? Guys, I can't really thank you enough. I've been thinking of all things that I'm going to say, but I can't really say much because it's very, very hard to think that I'm leaving this place. I was in here on my computer this morning to put stuff back. <laughs> but you've all been great, and I can't believe this wonderful gift you all. And I certainly appreciate it. I love working with Pastor Carl. He's been my counselor too. Every time I have a problem, I go sit down and we just, he helps me. He's helped me in so many ways. And he's just been, this has been my sanctuary all these years, not just a place to go to work. I don't even consider it a job. And I'm going to miss it. I'm really going to miss it. And the lady that we, that's uh, going to be here, I hope you'll give her the same love and affection that you've shown me, and I'm sure you will. She'll be a great, you know, I'll be helping her out the next couple of days probably with some questions <laughs> that she might have done, but, but be nice and be, <laughs> I know you will be, and everybody that's met her so far, you know, we really liked her, so. But thank you guys so much. And I do plan to come back here. I plan to be back. I'll be at the senior luncheons, Rebecca's circle things, and I'll be back, so. You won't forget me soon. <laughs> but thank you from the bottom of my heart, guys, for everything you've done. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share God's love, God's peace with Linda, with Dick, with each other on this day morning. an offering now and in the midst of that uh, offering you'll hear a special gift offered up by Tyler this morning and we'll set our table for the offering that God has of his presence.
while I was uh, envisioning what I wanted to do to honor Linda, because, you know, it's not over yet, um, I, I wanted to sing her song, and I thought, oh, this is going to be so nice. She's going to love this, and I was thinking, what would I want someone to sing? And I thought, oh, his eyes on the sparrow. Beautiful, right? Lovely choice. And uh, <laughs> I asked Linda, I said, hey, what do you think of this song? And she's like, oh, that's a funeral song. <laughs> I was like, well, I can't wait until Sunday when I sing it for her. <laughs> so here's a good old funeral song, I guess. No, no, I'm just joking. But, but truly, Linda has been such a good friend to me in my short three years here, and I am just pooped to see her go. But I'm excited for her because she won't have to deal with our antics every now and then. So, but I'm still going to call her and ask her questions. She doesn't know this, but it's, it's still going to be a thing. So, um, so this is for you, Miss Linda. <laughs> discouraged why should the shadows come why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches. I sing because I'm happy, and I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know Let not your hearts be troubled. His tender words I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know
touches me. Now, Miss Linda, you know that just because you're leaving doesn't mean we're keeping an eye out for you. The Lord is on our side too, you know. You gotta know He watches me. Please stand. Let us give a prayer of thanks for all these good gifts that have been brought forward. Holy God, we celebrate the wealth, the talent, the bread, the wine, all of it given to glorify you. Bless us in the midst of this gifts, Lord, so that we might share your power and your love with this world. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, we give thanks this morning for your gifts that have come upon us in the waters of baptism that have <clears throat> enabled us <clears throat> to be a blessing in this world. We pray for all those that we've talked about in our sermon today. We give a, a prayer of thanksgiving for the good gifts that Linda has brought us all these years at Messiah. Pray for these families that are grieving, this community that's broken, our country that's asking for answers. And Lord, on this start of summer, this Memorial Weekend, we pray too for all those who put on uniforms and protect us, especially those from our congregation Lifting up the names of Paul Newell, Andrew Bailey, Nathan Moore, Dylan Thomas, Alexis Halad, Teddy Begrell. We give thanks to their service and all service of veterans. And we pray a special prayer this morning for those who died in the midst of battle, whose names are memorialized this weekend in a civil celebration. Lord, we pray for those who are in need today, those who are sick or ill, those who are grieving and broken. We lift those names aloud. And may your love, Lord, find each of these, especially Julie in the hospital. And may your love, Lord, meet us in this space this bread and wine we trust the promises that jesus made to be present when we gathered and asked for in the night in which he was betrayed he took bread and broke it and gave thanks saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me and again after supper he took the cup and he blessed and he gave for all to drink saying this cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we are proclaiming the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill us with your love. Send us to be your people. Empower us to offer a blessing. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now behold the Lamb, the 
precious Lamb of God. You bore all my sin that I may live again, the precious Lamb of God. Holy is the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know, the precious Lamb of God. Thank you for the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Because of your grace, I can finish the race, the precious Lamb of God. Amen. You may be seated. We give thanks for those who are worshiping with us online. We share this first table with them and anyone in this space that wishes to commune in their seats. The body of Christ, given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for you. Amen. You may come forward to commune here. When you come forward, there's empty cups in the center that you'll take.
Let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks for these gifts that we have received inside of us. May, may your presence be born now by our presence in the world. Amen. Uh, just a few real quick announcements you heard. Uh, about uh, next Sunday, we are going to be chasing you with needles to make you give blood. So don't make this ugly. Just uh, sign up now. Sign up this week. And uh, uh, in that red theme, it's Pentecost Sunday next week, which is the, the highest uh, festival day next to Easter. Uh, but unfortunately, it falls in June, and we don't give away presents or chocolate bunnies. So it's not quite as popular as the other couple that we got. Uh, but it's popular here at Messiah. We are making a big celebration of it. Tyler, um, um, Ernie, and myself have have made a brand new Pentecost service that we're going to have next Sunday. So we hope that you come and be part of that. The tradition in these Lutheran circles is that you wear red on Pentecost Sunday. So if, if you don't, though, we won't shame you or anything like that. Uh, and then um, the other announcement, we're going to have a committal for Monica um, more, and in, in, uh, not this week, but the following week. And Ben Couch has some uh, flyers that you can ask him about that I'll tell you where and when and how to be part of that. It's going to be here in, in our front lawn. VBS, two weeks. Um, so try to find a way to be part of it. This is the largest outreach event we do in a year to our community and next to Messiah Night Pickup. Uh, so this is uh, reaching just a ton of people throughout the week. So all hands on deck. So find a way to be part of that. Um, as you heard in the midst of worship, uh, Linda's retiring, so we've got a large sheet cake down there that we'll probably cut before she makes her way down uh, that our own Emma from Messiah Night Pickup made. Uh, so stay and have a piece of cake and uh, uh, wish Linda well after the service. And, uh, and then enjoy Memorial Weekend. And, and of course, Memorial Weekend isn't uh, just about the unofficial start to summer. It's, it's about these um, men and women in our history in America that have given their lives in, uh, in the armed forces uh, in the midst of battles. And our prayer as church always is that we take these weapons and we somehow convince people to, to make them into plows instead. But until that time comes, we are thankful for those who make the sacrifice so we'll end our service remembering all those who have not just put on the uniform, who we give thanks for, but also those who have lost their lives. So let's do that silently. Please rise and let's lift up a silent prayer for all those.
Now receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. So hear my song.